This is the story of Ray and Sally McNeil. Ray McNeil, a well-known American weightlifter, U.S. Marine sergeant, media personality, and entrepreneur from the southern provinces of America, was born on December 17, 1964, and he passed away on February 14, 1995, at the age of 30. Ray was a professional bodybuilder. He competed in numerous fitness competitions and events, earning the titles of Mr. California, 1991, and Mr. Olympia. In addition to this, Ray also held the position of sergeant in the U.S. before beginning his career as a professional jockey. Their relationship was strained because Ray allegedly had issues during their marriage that frequently sparked heated arguments, including instances where he was abusive to Sally. Ray began weight training full-time in 1991 after Sally did so in 1990. Ray got his master card at the 1991 North American titles. However, by 1994, Ray needed a change of pace and began taking acting classes in order to pursue his dream of being a professional comic. In 1987, he married Sally Loden, also known as Sally McNeil. According to The Sun, Sally and Ray met while both were serving in the Navy. Soon after their first meeting, the couple begins dating. Sally also has a strong muscular head. Sally also had two children named Shatina and John prior to meeting Ray. And Ray treated Sally's children as his own. After meeting a woman named Marianne at his local gym, Ray undermined Sally while they were dating. Ray was still married to Sally when the two began dating. It's unclear what her last name is, but Sally seemed to be aware of the connection when she called her Mary Myers. I had the impression that he had a sweetheart. Before Sally shot and killed Ray, the two had been dating for almost three and a half years. After the incident, when Marianne was being questioned by police, she stated that she and Ray were planning their future together. She claimed that we really did have that kind of genuine romance most three and a half years. After the incident, when Marianne was being questioned by police, she stated that she and Ray were planning their future together. She claimed that we really did have that kind of genuine romance. It's the kind of subject matter for poetry or movies. Marianne did speak with the police, and the story highlights a couple of their exchanges. According to the affidavit, Sally discovered Ray's problem after reviewing his telephone charges. She made the decision to call the number again and inform the woman to steer clear of the recreation center that the two of them frequently visited. Sally claimed she told the woman, I'll beat you up if you play around with my husband. Marianne continued to see Ray, though. And before his demise, he would go on to spend that Valentine's Day with her, which would change everything. The story claims that when Ray returned shortly after, he got into a fight with Sally that led to his demise. Sally tells the filmmakers, that is what I consider a spouse. Spend Valentine's Day with your significant other rather than your prostitute, the saying goes. Following Ray's shooting death, Marianne also disclosed to experts that Sally might become abusive toward Ray in her meetings. In a scene from the series, Marianne informs investigators she would become upset about something. She would bring up all the previous bad things about them and just throw it in his face. Sally would get into this amazing anger, Marianne continued. It's uncertain if Marianne also testified in court during the preliminary hearing. On Tuesday, February 14, at 10.40 p.m., Ray returned to the apartment he shared with Sally and her two young children from her previous marriage. However, in the kitchen, the couple got into a heated argument. On Valentine's Day, Sally McNeil shot and murdered her husband Ray McNeil inside the apartment they shared. Afterwards, she immediately called 911. Sally took her 12-gauge shotgun from the room and shot her husband twice, 
striking him in the stomach and mouth. Two hours after the incident, Ray was taken by ambulance to Scripps Memorial Medical Center in La Jolla, where he was declared dead during a medical procedure. On Netflix, the true crime documentary opens with Sally the Executioner, beginning with death and the recording of an emergency call. Sally McNeil's shaky but passionate voice addresses the Oceanside, California, audience with clear-cut justifications, she shot her better half because he was abusing her. Her young daughter is the screaming voice heard behind the scenes. While Ray McNeil was lying on the ground in cold blood, Sally never questions these facts or the way she killed Ray on Valentine's Day in 1995 by shooting him twice, once in the abdomen and once in the face, with a gun she had purchased. The three-part series, directed by Nanette Burstein, Hillary, analyzes how the law, the media, and McNeil's case were all handled. McNeil was portrayed as a member of the misunderstood weightlifting subculture, a victim of postponed domestic abuse, and a solid, undeniably buff woman with serious areas of strength for any batter. McNeil was detained and given a murder charge. Her two kids, who were 9 and 11 at the time, were taken to a shelter before being transported across the nation to Allentown, Pennsylvania, close to McNeil's former neighborhood, where they now reside with their grandmother. The media referred to Sally McNeil as the siphoned-up princess and a sturdy lady of the hour. She is a former Marine and amateur jock who moonlights as a wrestler for direct-to-home recordings. Another three-part narrative series centers on what may have been the most rarely reported race-rage murder case at any time, in which a woman killed her like-minded musclehead spouse following a tumultuous marriage. Sally McNeil declared, I killed the man that I adored the most on earth. Her case attracted public attention shortly after a few high-profile preliminary cases involving domestic violence or possibly the social ghost of the furious lady, the 1995 O.J. Simpson preliminary, in which Simpson was exonerated of the murder of his better half, Nicole Earthy Simpson, whom he actually manhandled, the 1994 attack on rival professional skater Nancy Kerrigan by Tanya Harding, and the 1994 preliminary for remarriage by Lorena Bobbitt. The Simpson trial was the focus of Ezra Edelman's outstanding 2016 documentary O.J., Made in America, Harding was the topic of the 2018 film I, Tanya, and Bobbitt was the subject of the 2019 Amazon series Lorena. Since this is still happening today, it's really about different women, as seen by numerous examples of convicted and imprisoned abusers who ensured their own survival. The evidence suggests that aggressive behavior at home contributes to detention in direct and indirect ways, but there is no authority monitoring the rate of this criminalization. According to a recent Vera Institute for Gender Equity report, 77% of women in U.S. prisons have experienced personal accomplice brutality. In this way, Executioner Sally provides a natural modern update by highlighting how the broader body of laws was unprepared for and insensitive to the deceiving effects of condoned domestic abuse, especially coming from a woman as attractive as she was. How an indictment team successfully twisted her self-preservation claims and irregularities into a second-degree murder conviction and a 19-to-life sentence how private accomplice cruelty allures, defile, and endures is generally described, as might be expected of McNeil in a few casual chats. The three episodes follow Sally McNeil's synchronized journeys, beginning with weight training in the 1980s and ending with a tornado of emotion with Ray McNeil, frequently in that order. Sally sought out her breakthrough sports, jumping, cross-country, and, in her twenties, working out, after being defeated by both her stepfather and her most memorable spouse. She claims that her encounter with Ray McNeil at a fitness facility was a desire from the outset. Interracial, Sally is white and Ray is dark, dressed in close gym attire, and with a procession of muscles, the two appeared to be an attractive weightlifting power couple. 
Both were enthusiastic about the pursuit of stylish optimism through intensive preparation and mastery of the human body. The name of the show is derived from Sally's stage name, which she used in order to raise money for Ray's blossoming professional career and the illegal supplements, steroids, that were anticipated to remain serious. With her alleged muscle prostitution, in which she wrestled men in lodgings or on mail order recordings, Sally could earn up to $300 per hour. She claims that in 1993, she spent $24,000 of her professional income, dingy and mocked, on Ray's weightlifting endeavors. The financial pressure coincided with rising domestic instability. McNeil discusses Ray's regular beatings with her two older children, Shantina and John, beginning not long after their 1987 nuptials. Ray hit her over the head three days into their marriage, shattering her lip. Ray, who had about 100 pounds of muscle on him, allegedly routinely gagged Sally, Shantina recalls seeing her mother gasping for air. Ray once fractured Sally's nose in front of her children, she reported it, but nothing happened after that. In a disturbing clip from the police cross-examination room the night before Ray died, McNeil's children try to reassure her that everything will be okay. Fourth grader John says, if you thought, he, planned to murder you, that is self-protection. The final hour of the series focuses on McNeil's 1996 preliminary hearing, which included the indictment's claim that McNeil's decision to reload the gun before firing it demonstrated a deliberate intention. When you examine a situation like this, you are forced to consider someone's guilt or responsibility, just as the jury was forced to do. As a result, it's crucial to highlight the indictment's strong points, Burstein stated. However, some of it was also pointing out how absurd some of the argument was, that she couldn't have possibly been a casualty because she was key in too many areas of strength, which is absurd. I just shot my husband, he just beat me up after her better half passed away. She informed a 911 supervisor. At her hearing, Sally asserted that she was a mistreated woman who was terrified for her life that terrible night after her partner tried to gag her. According to the examiners, she had her own unique encounters with viciousness. They claimed that after shooting her partner in the face with a shotgun, McNeil returned to the room to reload before shooting him once more. She claimed to have stopped using steroids, but experts claim they were still present in her blood when she was apprehended. McNeil received a sentence and spent 25 years in prison. I killed him in order to protect myself. He was trying to murder me, she stated. Sally McNeil received a 19-year life sentence in prison after being found guilty of his homicide. On Valentine's Day in 1996, exactly one year after the episode that changed the game, McNeil's preliminary round began. On March 19, 1996, McNeil received a sentence for second-degree murder after a protracted preliminary hearing. She was incarcerated at the Focal California Ladies' Office in Chowchilla, which is located 40 miles north of Fresno. After serving 24 years in prison, McNeil was granted parole on May 29, 2020, and was thereafter released from custody. Sally has remarried to Norfleet Stewart, her third spouse, after meeting him at a support group. Sally McNeil the perfect casualty isn't Sally, she said. Although occasionally I was persuaded to believe in her innocence and other times her guilt. I am on the fence about this issue. There were not enough facts about how Ray treated or abused Sally in my opinion. This was a very interesting case to say the least and I am a supporter against domestic violence especially against women. Stay tuned for more exclusive videos like this. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Crimes and Candyland channel.